My name is Nivin Sanduka, and I'm the Regional Chief of Staff at Olmec. Here in Palestine and Israel, we see firsthand the impact of grassroots peace building through our member organizations' work. Together, these efforts of our network build trust between societies and work towards raising informed and empathetic citizens who actively support an end to the conflict with the other side. Joining me today are three uh, member organizations, Mr. Mohammed Deraushe from Givat Haviva Center, Mr. Bashar Shawa from the Eco Peace Palestine, and Ms. Lea Beinhacker from Hand in Hand. Thank you so much for joining us today. So first of all, we'd like to understand a little bit more what does grassroots peace building mean to you? Maybe I can start with you, Mr. Muhammad. Yes. Uh, first of all, grassroots work means trying to find the right individuals that need to be engaged in leadership training in order to be peace activists, to meet with the peers from the other side so that they understand that the other is a human being. He's not just an enemy. He's not just a political case. He's not just a security case but someone with whom you can build a common future. Ms. Leia? So grassroots organizing at Hand in Hand looks like Jewish and Palestinian students coming together in schools from preschool all the way through high school, learning together in shared classrooms, learning one another's history, culture, narrative, language, growing together, and bringing along their families in community organizing and making change from the bottom up. Amazing. And last but not, not least, Bashar. Um, hi, Yin, and thank you. As environmental peace building regional organization, which is uh, 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 working mainly in Palestine, Israel, and Jordan, we we, we focus on all our, our tracks and, and projects, regardless it's an educational background, green entrepreneurship, young professional targeting projects, EcoPeace mainly focused at the grassroots level as a, a changing point. And for sure, the policy making uh, is, a, is a changing factor here. But uh, if we don't work on grassroots level, I think the change will not be effective. But can you tell us a little bit more? How can grassroots peace building disrupt this bleak status quo and change reality towards peace and equality, especially for the new generation? So the status quo gets disrupted when you do something that's really, really different. And in our schools, we bring together Jewish students and Palestinian students. In our schools, the students come together in a shared classroom. And then when something is happening outside of their schools, these students have a reference point for who the other is. It's no longer something that's really so remote. It's a peer, it's a friend, and that disrupts the status quo. Amazing, thank you for sharing. Hamad, do you wanna to add to that maybe about your view? Yes, yes. I mean, we, we do a lot of uh, programs of uh, cross-sector teachers programs where we place Jewish teachers in Arab schools and Arab teachers in Jewish schools. They talk about the problems, the issues, the conflictual issues that allow the elephant into the room and someone that they can develop mutual interests with. And I think that's probably the most important part where you get out of the cycle, the vicious cycle of violence, which seems to be a deadlock. And here we show that it's not a deadlock. You can develop a personal uh, empathy to each other. You can engage in dialogue with each other and you can develop mutual interests together. How do you measure your success? You know, in, in one of the one of our programs, the cross sector teachers program, we know, for example, from measurement that for 93 percent of the kids that we work with, this is their first and only meaningful encounter with the other. And for 68 percent of them, this changes their perspective from negative to positive about that. And uh, now the question is, to how many more people do we uh, present to this experience? So it's not just few thousands or few, or few tens of thousands, but hundreds and millions of, of participants, and to make sure that this impact lasts for much, much longer time. And my question next would be, how do we actually achieve policy changes as well? Uh, a grassroots movement for change can be so powerful. It can bring policy changes in its wake. You know, our elected officials can see what people are demanding, what people are wanting. And we see this around the world, that social movements 
can cause policy changes. We can also be sharing our work as we are our organizations with policy leaders, letting them come and see the value of this work, why it's so important, what role they can play as elected officials and lobbying for them to adopt it and expand it. What do you feel that, that the peace, peace building field is missing, uh, Bashar? Political will, I think it's one of the one of the main challenges we we face, and we need uh, to change the the political will of all parties of the conflict. Whatever we will do, it won't be uh, felt at the at the sh at the short term. It will for sure needs a uh, long term impact. Uh, Leia, I think what we need is scale. We need to be able to reach a tipping point. And we do that by all of us continuing the amazing, meaningful, hard work that we're doing by having more organizations start working in this field and all of us together raising the visibility of our work and keeping at it. We need ALMA to continue connecting us and letting us all together be more than the sum of our parts because this is a field that has a huge mission we have big ambitions, we've got a huge problem to solve, and we need scale to do it together. Thank you very much for everything that you do, and thank you very much for also joining us this evening.